Okay, folks, listen up. Let's start off with a very, very quick summary of the definition of the assignment. <coughs> and think about, first of all, the key words in the learning outcomes. You, the first one is understanding the role of IT services management uh, in doing things, recognize the difference between technology service and product, and the way that technology service can be, uh, can be valuable to an organization. Then, secondly, critically evaluate numbers of options for the delivery of an IT service and make a recommendation. And then designing with a good justification of, of why you've made your design choices and to develop a little service, IT related service, which is of value to something, pulling together various things. <coughs> so what you're trying to do is to find something relying on location services in the broadest concept, context that allow you to do something really cool, really useful, it might be to a business or to an individual, using a smart device app, something like a smartphone, it could be a tablet, because you've got the opportunity to think about using it indoors or outdoors, you can use latitude and longitude, um, at, from the GPS type of environment, which is not very good indoors, but outdoors it often works quite well, but not near big buildings, perhaps, maybe not under trees in the, in the summer if they've got lots of leaves on. All sorts of things make it a little bit tricky if you want to use Latin longitude. Alternatively, you can go to um, Pan Studio and see how they uh, ran, designed a little sort of app that allow that they call Hello Lamp Post. And it's a kind of an exhibition they take around the world. And they identify various street furniture, things like you know, names of roads, or the number on a fire hydrant, or the number on a lamp post, and use your phone to um, phone camera through the app to look at the um, that identification and then say, ah, oh, I know where that is because it's already been put into me. So I'm deducing your physical location from this identification you're feeding in. Or if you're indoors, and, they, and other companies have done this, <coughs> is inside um, museums where they use these little Bluetooth uh, beacons that, that allow the app to calculate where they are, the person is within the uh, room within the display and then feed to the user of that tablet or that smart device app relevant mini videos or audio commentary or a few little pictures, whatever makes brings that particular area of the museum to life. Or, or a map. Pardon? Or a map. You could use a map. Don't mind, you know, you can actually just go and press on a map. So there's different ways of picking up location when you're using location services, you don't have to be, think just about the uh, location services chip inside that, which is trying to find out from um, the GPS satellites, your cell location, your Wi-Fi locations around you, and so on. You can look at various different ways of using location and its context to do this. So this is what you'll be doing in here. We'll be debating and justifying the different sorts of ways you could identify the location in your particular um, app that you're creating or your service. So you could be creating a service for a game, outdoors or indoors, or for school children, or for a museum, or guided tours around the university. Lots and lots of different things that you could create. That then requires all sorts of bits of content, videos, audio, documentary, whatever. That's what this bit's about. <coughs> now, the architecture requirements, please note very carefully that word is by itself, just architecture. In the context, it then mentions the Zachman Enterprise architecture. So, I'm not necessarily asking you to do a technical architecture, a software 
data and so on. I'm looking at using the broadest planner owner architectural perspective from the Zachman Enterprise Architecture. Things like that answer the questions who, how, where, why, when. That's the sort of architecture I'm kind of addressing here. But I'm using the word architecture there to link into the Zachman. Because those are, that asks you the six questions at the two levels, and that's going to be interesting. If I go back to, for example, last year, when we were looking at the mo module which was to design a better or a new IT service for students in the University of Derby, in terms of the architecture, one of the fundamental questions was of when. When to implement, because it's, if it's going to be if it was to do with better timetable display or integration, it was kind of useful to have it integrated and delivered before the start of a term or before the start of an academic year. It's not ever so helpful to introduce something brand new that needs to know when you're starting the year delivered halfway through a term. It's not helpful. So, and then into, if you're thinking about a different service, if you think about turn it in. Do you remember last year, at the end of uh, November, early December, Turnitin kind of crashed, didn't it? You remember that? It does that every Christmas. <coughs> it does it every Christmas because they haven't thought about the architectural question of when. But everybody knows, who's got half a brain cell, that there are several million students submitting to Turnitin in the first two weeks of December. Which means you've got to scale up your, your physical architecture to vast numbers of virtual machines or compute capacity which you can then collapse down to nearly zero early in January. Because nobody's submitting anything at the end, at beginning of January. In fact, probably not submitting anything to turn it in for months. And they don't answer that question. They never think of asking that question. So that's what that's about. And then this one, the fourth paragraph, is all about, okay, so let's assume you've designed it, you've covered all of the UTA, UT, TAM sort of things about usability, usefulness, to get it actually working and in use, then how are we going to me measure the success? And we'll be looking at some of those questions next week as to what you might be thinking about in terms of the success of your project, the success of your app. Well, I'll leave that one until next week. Just have a look down at the uh, next so what I've done here is just show you rather more formally that I want to see the assignment structured like that with those four chapters plus a conclusions one stuck on the end where you bring everything together. And the re part of the reason for that is when you look at the assessment criteria at the bottom. Yeah, you've got the usual 20% for presentation and all those things. <coughs> and then four columns. And each of those four columns is one of those chapters. So you make my life much easier if you write four chapters or four major sections like that. It means that when we see each other, um, the week beginning... the. Well, 30th of November, that's a Sunday. Monday, the 1st of December. I'll put out a timetable beforehand, a schedule of when I will see each of you for about 10 to 12 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Then I will go through your assignment with you. This rubric will be sitting inside Turnitin, and I will update it. I'll put all the comments and so on in there, which will give you complete feedback of where you have got to by that point. After which you will then have four weeks to the first week of January when you have to submit the final version. And I will expect you, unless you've got staggeringly good uh, results at the f final draft level, I would expect to see you take on board the, chain, the com com comments and the discussion that we have in my office while going through this with you so that you can improve it. And what normally happens is that the difference in mark that I will give you first week of December 
the difference between that mark and the mark you will ultimately get the first week of January, there's going to be on average somewhere between 10 to 20 percent improvement in your grades. That's why I do it, because I'm giving you all of the feedback that you would normally get when you finish the assignment and two, three, four weeks after you finished it, I'm going to give you that four weeks before you submit it. So it is timed so that you can actually do something useful with that feedback. I improve the quality of what you just written because the stuff that's normally delivered for this final draft formative feedback is what would normally have been delivered as a final version for me to mark. So by working with you here, you get a lot of in useful information that helps you to really achieve your potential. Because you can use feedback at a point when it's useful rather than afterwards when it's no longer of any use whatsoever. So that's why I want you to do as good a version of your, art of your article by 29th, 30th of November. So you've got about three weeks to work on it. Now, what I'm going to do now is go, I want us to have a think about or talk, discussion about what sort of services have you already come up with, and then we'll kind of see how everybody is, and if, it, and if there's time, I'll come around and have a short discussion with each of you about your proposal, and then basically go to it, folks, and start building that structure. And I want to see for next week the structure and the topic, so title, um, which refers to the topic, sort of thing you're trying to develop and then those four uh, sections as, as you might say as headers and then the basic structure of how you are going to actually address these. What sort of technologies are you going to include? So here I'd expect to see one or two subsections which actually make it clear what sort of thing you're trying to deliver here, <coughs> an identification of some of the critical technologies that you're going to be using, whether it's, you know, whether it's full GPS, whether it's the assisted GPS, whether it's Bluetooth type beacons if it's indoors, QR codes is another way of um, identifying location because you go around and post the square thingies around. So you've got a lot of different technologies which help your app to know where that smartphone is at a particular point in time. Lots of different approaches. Then here, identify little sections as part of the structure of the sort of approach you're taking in terms of using Zachman Enterprise Architecture questions to work out what are the important things in the overall delivery of that service. It could be time dependent, it could be location dependent, it could be people dependent, lots of different options. You don't have to cover everything. That one will leave until the week after next, but by then you'll be able to start filling in this lot and in, we'll spend a lot of time the following week um, actually in the particular workshop running through how you're developing. Okay? That makes sense folks. I'll post these up fairly soon.